Here we go. Food chains and food webs. That's what we're going to talk about today. But before we do that, I just want to review the ecological pyramid. Here's my beautiful garden growing with some fruit trees around there. And there is my wonderful family. Wow, Mr. Corver, you've got a lot of extra hair there. All right. Moving on. Uh, I didn't tell you this, but there is a giant man-eating bear that lives around my house too. So my ecological pyramid looks something like this. If I were to bring in the pyramid, the bottom row is going to be my producers or the plants. The middle row is going to be my primary consumers. That's going to be my family. And then the secondary consumers are the things that eat the primary consumers. And in this case, it's going to be the bear. I can now break this apart into a food chain. And a food chain is just going to follow the energy of one run. So I've got the fruit from this tree going into the belly of this guy. So I draw an arrow from where the energy is going to. So the energy from the fruit is going into the dude, and then the energy of the dude is going into the bear. So that's how you put your arrowheads on these particular food chain diagrams. So what would that look like in, say, an actual forest diagram? Well, let's take a look at this oak tree. And I do know that oak trees produce acorns, and I know squirrels like to eat those acorns, so I'll draw a line there. The squirrel can be eaten by a coyote. So that is a simple food chain that happens in New York State. You might also say, Mr. Corr, what about the red fox? Doesn't that eat a squirrel? Well, yes, it does, so I can draw an arrow to that. And now we're no longer really looking at a single chain. We're starting to create what we call a web. So I can now look at the grass. The woodchuck eats the grass. The woodchuck is also eaten by the coyote. I can then look at the grass is eaten by the rabbit, and the rabbit, then the energy might go to the coyote, or it might actually go to the red fox. So I get this uh, set of connections that occur in this particular little ecosystem. Here's a New York State pond. I've got duckweed, algae, stoneflies, great blue herons, bass, frog, minnow. And in this case, I've got the duckweed being eaten by the stonefly. Also, the algae is being eaten by the stonefly, so I draw the arrows towards it. Now, what eats the stonefly? That would be a frog. A frog can eat that. The frog can also be eaten by the great blue heron, or it can be eaten by the bass. The bass can be eaten by the great blue heron. And then finally, this little minnow can eat the duckweed. And it could be eaten then by the bass, which then is also eaten by the blue heron. And yes, some algae might also be eaten by the minnow. So again, it's looking more like a web. It's a collection of chains stuck together. So what I'm going to want you to do is, oh, sorry, and the minnow can be eaten by the heron. What I'm going to want you to do is figure out some of the food chains and food web type connections in this scenario of the deserted island. You're stuck on this deserted island. You need to figure out how all these different animals and plants uh, are connected. Once you've completed that one, I have a second one, which is the Arctic ice. You're going to go up there, and you're stuck on an ice sheet, and you got to figure out what is connected to what. So that is uh, what I'd like you to do for today. And I hope you understand, again, the food chain is one line out of an entire food web, which is all the connections of all the animals. All right, hope that made sense.